Hi everybody, my name is Bob Maidens. I'm the Senior Engineering Manager for the Cert Capture Business Unit within Avalara and today I'm really excited to talk to you about adding exemption management capabilities to your integration. Why are managing exemptions important? For all sales transactions, businesses are either required to collect sales tax or provide proof that the transaction is tax exempt by way of an exemption and or certificate. Under state audits, these exemption certificates are like currency in that a missing, invalid and or expired certificate can result in a costly assessment, which is directly tied back to the size of the transaction, not to mention penalties and interest that typically follow these assessments for years to come. Without a solution, Pulling these exemption details under audit is typically difficult because of the manual processes in place. Certificates may or may not have been collected on the front end of the transaction, and if a document was in fact collected, it may not have been the correct document, filled out correctly, or it's even possible it's expired. That's why today I'm going to demonstrate how Avalara makes this process as simple and as painless as possible. Exemptions versus certificates. From a technical standpoint, I want to talk about how exemptions and certificates are treated and stored in the Avalara cloud. Exemption records are stored within the tax calculation engine. They consist of simplified data, a customer reference or a foreign key, exempt reason, a jurisdiction or exposure zone, a start date and end date, and some additional metadata. It's this data that's used within the get tax call to confirm whether a customer is exempt for any given transaction as quickly as possible. Certificates, on the other hand, encompass much more complex information and customer relationships. For example, bill to ship to customers and multi-jurisdictional applications. They are also tracked as a physical file saved to the cloud. They are stored by the Cert Capture application on the back end, so you may see some differing nomenclature when it comes to some key data points. For example, customer code versus customer number, jurisdiction versus exposure zone. That being said, let's dive into the fun stuff. <clears throat> Today, I'm going to demonstrate via the API how to add customers, add exemptions, link them together, and then create a transaction for that new customer and ensure that transaction is tax exempt. All of the API calls I'll be doing today are from the certificate endpoints, the customer's endpoints, and in the next step, I will be doing some role around the e-commerce tokens. Let's dive into our Postman uh, collection here. So first of all, today, what I'm going to do is be doing a get call on our certificates endpoint for our company. Our company ID in this case is 26932267. This is the company ID I have set up on Sandbox for this particular demo. Uh, you can see here I'm hitting the Sandbox API endpoint. So I'll be doing a get call on here to make sure that we don't have any certificates on file yet or any exemptions. I'm going to go ahead and create one. You create one by doing a, uh, by doing a post call to company slash company ID slash certificates. So the data that I will be using to create this uh, exemption record, I've got a sign date here that is set to be the uh, start of June 2020. The ex it will expire on the uh, end of 2025. I have a file name here. Uh, this is a requirement for creating an exemption record. It doesn't have to be a physical file, but it can be a a file that maybe you've stored in a Dropbox or a Google Drive or just on your hard drive, something like that. It's going to be an, for the exempt reason of resale and the exposure zone of Washington. So let's fire off that API call. And there we go. Here is our brand new exemption record. We have an ID of 88. I'm going to copy that and update my variables here. As we use that ID in several calls in the next several calls we have here a resale and Washington and again the 1st of June 2020 and it expires on at the end of 2025 
So let's do a sanity check. Do a get request on that new certificate ID, which is 88. Make sure it exists, make sure it's the same. And again, it is Dropbox certificate one, signed on the 1st of June, 2020 and expires on 20, 2025, resale and Washington. So there is our new ex exemption record. Let's have a look at our customers here. So we're gonna do a get call on our company slash company ID slash customers. We don't have any customers on file yet. So let's go ahead and create one. This will be a post call to companies slash company ID slash customers. <clears throat> and here we have here, we're gonna create it with a customer code of exempt cust one. A Mr. Exempt is his name. He lives at 255 South King Street in Seattle, which is the Avalara Seattle headquarters. We're going to be, uh, they're from Washington and they're gonna also have the exposure zone of Washington. So let's fire off this API call. And there we have, there is our new customer record with our customer code of exempt customer one. So let's do another sanity check to ensure that yes, we do have that uh, customer record on file, exempt customer one. So here, get request to company slash company ID slash customers slash customer code, and it returned the correct value. Now, the let's take that new certificate that we created, which is certificate ID of 88, and then link that new customer that we created, Mr. Exempt, to that new uh, that new certificate. So here, this uh, we're going to do a post to companies, company IDs, certificates, a new certificate ID of 88, customers slash link. And what this requires is a list of the customers that will be associated with that certificate. In this case, just one, exempt customer one. We pass in the customer code of all of the customers that we want, just exempt customer one, Mr. Exempt. We do a post call there. Make sure that that's good. Again, there is our new customer, Mr. Exempt, exempt customer one. We'll do another sanity check to make sure that uh, exempt customer one has an associated exemption or a certificate record associated with it. So this is the get, get call on the customers slash customer code endpoint, uh, checking their certificates. And again, this is the new certificate that we created, Dropbox Certificate 1, signed on the 1st of June, and expires in the end in 2025, resale and Washington. Now, the important stuff. We are going to create a transaction with that customer, exempt customer 1, in Washington, for $40.21 worth of exempt items. It's gonna be a sales order. It's gonna be created today. We're gonna to ship it from 512 South Mangum Street in Durham, which is the Avalara office in North Carolina. And we're gonna ship it to 255 South King Street, which is Mr. Exempt's home. And of course, that is a post to transactions slash create. And there we have our brand new transaction for exempt customer one. The total amount was $40.21. We have total tax of zero, total taxable of zero, and total tax calculated of zero. So this transaction was completely tax exempt. This concludes the first section for exempting customers via the, via the API. Let's move on to the e-commerce plugin. Cert Capture for e-commerce is an automated exemption certificate management solution designed specifically for integration with online shopping carts. It provides a quick and easy way to collect and validate sales tax exemption certificates at checkout. In technical terms, it's a JavaScript snippet that you can drop into your website as part of the checkout process to collect an exemption for the customer as part of their purchase process. The API runbook for this piece would demonstrate how to create an e-commerce token and add it to a HTML snippet. 
we will be creating an e-commerce token, which are a way to ensure that the data that your customers are filling out within your website remains secure. The token is valid for 60 minutes and it is tied to the company and customer used to create it. So I'm going to switch over here to my uh, HTML uh, website here. It is an Avalara for so capture for e-commerce website. It is a very simple uh, HTML website. It can t I have built it based of Bootstrap 4 here. Let's uh, load it up and have a look. Very simple information here. It just looks like a shopping cart. I have three items in my pretend cart, three watches, three camera lens, and three gray running shoes. And I have a little button here that says I want to purchase this tax exempt and then some additional standard checkout cart information and interactions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this. If, if I was coming to this website and I wanted to buy all these things tax exempt, I might click this button here. We're going to get an error that says invalid credentials provided. So let's go and get some valid credentials. For this, we're going to do two API calls. We're going to create a customer and then we're going to create a token with that customer. So for the creating a customer, we're going to do the same API call we did earlier, but it will be for a new customer, a new a customer called exempt customer two. The name will be Mrs. Exempt, who lives at 2000 Main Street, Irvine, uh, California. Uh, it, it appears that uh, her and Mrs. Mr. Exempt uh, have estranged, but that's okay. They live at different addresses, but for this demo, that works out really well. So I'll go ahead and do this post call, create this uh, customer record, and there we have Exempt Customer 2, Mrs. Exempt, 2000 Main Street in Irvine, California. Now using this customer code here, or this customer number, we're going to go and generate an e-commerce token. So in this one here, I'll be passing the customer number that we'll be generating the token for, Exempt Customer 2. And I'll be doing a post call to company slash company ID slash e-commerce tokens. And as you can see, that worked and generated a nice big hash that we can use on our website. I'm going to copy and paste that now. You see that that created date is here and it is invalid for exactly one hour. So I'm going to switch back to my code over here uh, and go quickly run through this uh, HTML uh, website that I've set up here. Again, just some very simple um, HTML outputting of um, shopping cart. I do have here this, uh, con this little section here, which is the I want to purchase a tax exempt um, box and a button that says I am a tax exempt customer with the ID of button dash exempt. I've also got a hidden empty div here with the ID of form container. This is the additional HTML stuff here, but here is where we get down to the meat. We have, we're including jQuery and some bootstrap JavaScript, but this is the, uh, the custom piece that we want to look at today. We are including some JavaScript that is loaded from the Sir Capture Sandbox environment. And then adding an event to that button that we that I showed you up there that once it clicks, it will then initialize our GenCert plugin with that new token we just generated for California. So I'm going to switch back over to my pretend shopping cart, have a reload, and yes, click, uh, I am a tax exempt customer. Now, the information that is here it is matching the customer that we just created. So Mrs. Exempt, 2000 Main Street, Irvine, California. Let's save and continue here. Mrs. Uh, exempt will be reselling these particular items. So we'll select that option here. And this will give us the, uh, the numbers that uh, the fields that are required for the California resale certificate, which is uh, demonstrated over here. These are the various fields that are required for it. So I am selling uh, exempt items and I will be uh, described the property will be exempt stuff. Save and continue. And then the last piece will be adding a signature. So I will sign that as myself, Bob Maidens, Avalara, next 
speaker and then I will use my proper signature here B O B exclamation mark and what signature is not perfect without a smiley face so I'm going to hit save and continue that will generate for a couple of seconds and then we have we successfully generated a document for exempt customer 2. Now if I were to pop over into my sandbox UI over here working in that account that I showed earlier we see here we have two exemption records two exempt customers a Mr. Exempt, Exempt Customer 1 and they have one, one active exemption let's have a look at that that is for Washington Resale with our ID of 88 effective 1st of June 2020 and expires at the end of 2025 so if I go back to my exempt customers and I have a look at Mrs. Exempt Exempt Customer 2 created today and let's have a look at this one here again California Resale effective today and expires at the end of time we also have a button here to download that certificate we just generated which if I open it up here we can see all of the values that we just generated on there so 99999 we are engaged in selling exempt items description of property exempt stuff and then all of the Mrs. Exempt information that we generated via API, as well as me signing this signature, especially with the cute little smiley face that I did here earlier. There is also a fantastic, um, or a demo that you can view through on the Avalara developer website, in which you can play with many of the settings that are available to the e-commerce plugin. There we go. And again, that provides a example of the various different things you can use for this tool. That concludes my presentation of exemption management and e-commerce tokens. So any questions?